your Bibles with me to Exodus 5. I'll be reading two, the two last verses, Exodus 5 and Exodus 6, verse 1. So Exodus 5, 22 and 23, Exodus 6 and verse 1. Here begins the reading of God's holy word. So Moses returned to the Lord and said, Lord, why have you brought trouble on this people? Why is it you have sent me? For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has done evil to this people. Neither have you delivered your people at all. Exodus 6 verse 1, Then the Lord said to Moses, now you shall see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand, he will let them go. And with a strong hand, he will drive them out of his land. Praise God. Hallelujah. The theme of the message today is now you will see. Now you will see. So the Bible said in Exodus 5 that Moses returned to the Lord and said, why have you brought evil on this people? Why is it that you have sent me? For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has done evil to this people. Neither have you, God, deliver your people at all. This is after God told Moses, if you know the story, to go and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. And Pharaoh said, no. And he doesn't just say no, he made their burdens worse. Soon after Moses left the meeting with Pharaoh, Hallelujah, which did not turn out as Moses anticipated. The, the people jeered him. When you read Exodus 5, they jeered at him uh, for what his word to Pharaoh brought upon them. Heavier labor and intense abuse. And I believe that Moses felt shattered. He felt rejected. How many of you know God has given your word and you've delivered that word and it wasn't accepted? He felt rejected. He felt shattered. He felt the resistance. He, he felt like he wasn't the man for the job. Pharaoh didn't accept his message and now his people are turning against him. And he, Moses, begins to doubt himself. Am I speaking to someone here right now? The way you feel is like, you know, no one's listening to you. You feel like God has told you something and it's just hitting a ceiling and bouncing back on you. And you feel discouraged. But I want to tell you, if Satan cannot oppose you, he will put unbelief in you. He will put doubt in you. Doubt to the call of the work that God has called you to do. Doubt to the call about your salvation. My God, doubt about your ministry. But I come to break down that lie today. Oh God, help me, Holy Spirit. I come to break down that light today. I don't know if I'm preaching to people who are already reached, but I know when God has said something to me and then all hell break loose, sometimes I do feel rejected and sometimes I do feel shattered, but I remember the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I remember that I am the righteousness of God created in Christ Jesus. And if God has spoken a word over my life, if God has spoken a word to me, thus says the Lord, it shall come to pass. So Moses left Pharaoh's palace. He felt discouraged. He was at the end of his rope. Remember, Moses was 80 years old. No 80 year old want to take on that stress. Ah, but the Bible says immediately he took his sorrow to the throne 
of grace. Oh, hallelujah. He took his pain to the throne of grace. He took his sorrow to the throne of grace where he may obtain mercy. Where he may find grace to help him in time of need. So Moses goes back to God. Moses got alone with God. I want you to notice today that it was only Moses that went to the Lord. Aaron, his mouthpiece, was not with him. Moses didn't need a mouthpiece to speak to God on his behalf. And I come to encourage you today. You can take your burdens to the Lord. My God, you don't need a mouthpiece. Aaron wasn't with Moses. Moses was broken. He was shattered. He was rejected. It was personal. And he took it to the throne of grace. Hallelujah. This was personal. God, you told me. Hallelujah. When it comes to your salvation, when it comes to your mental state, when it comes to your faith, when it comes to your walk with the Lord, when it comes to your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions, you don't need to go with a man. You go to God by yourself. And so Moses went to God. Yes, it's good to have a prayer partner, but I'm telling you, they can't tell God like you can. They can't tell him your, your deep inner feeling like you can. And so Moses got alone with God. He poured out his heart to the Lord. He went to God broken. Ah, flesh broken. Will broken. And the Bible tells us uh, that the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a contrite heart. The Bible says these, oh God, will not despise. And I'm here to encourage you today. Don't take your brokenness to Netflix. Don't take your brokenness to the pub. Don't take your brokenness to shopping. Take it to the Lord. Oh God, I know what I'm saying because sometimes you get discouraged and you go spend all that you don't have. Eat all that you don't want. But I'm here to tell you, take your brokenness to the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And Moses had two questions for God. Why have you brought trouble on this people? Why is it you have sent me? He said, for since I came and talked to Pharaoh about your message, he, you need to help them. He's done evil to us. And the Lord said to Moses, now you shall see what I will do for with a strong hand, he will let them go. Come on. With a strong hand, he will let them go. Now you will see. Oh, hallelujah. I pray that you get it by the time I finish. Now you will see. Now you will see. God used Pharaoh to stir up Israel's nest. I'm using that idiom today to stir up their nest. They were comfortable. They were doing good under the previous Pharaoh. And God wanted to get them out of their comfort zone. My God, their time in Egypt was coming to an end. And God had to use something and someone to get them into proper alignment with their destiny. There's a destiny hanging over your head. And God has to stir you up. Stir up the nest. Bring on some trials to get you in line. Oh God. Mm. The Lord said to Abraham, we know about Israel's history. God spoke to Abraham and he said, go from your country. Go from your people. Go from your father's house into a land that I will show you. He said, I will make you a great nation and I will bless you. 
and I will make your name great, Abraham, and you will be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. And all the peoples of the earth will be blessed through you. So God needed a group of people who would represent his character in the earth. That was the children of Israel. God needed Christ Jesus to come through the lineage and fulfill his prophet, uh, prophecy. And that was the children children of Israel and God needed them to move from promise to promise from covenant to covenant my God where we're engrafted in and now we are blessed since we are in Christ Jesus and that was the children of Israel so Egypt was not their destination where you are now is not your destination. So God had to stir their nests to fulfill his promise because being in Egypt is not the place of promise. Oh God. It was for provision. It was to keep them for a time but the time has come to an end and you've got to move on. Hallelujah. Can I say to someone here today, you are too comfortable. You are too comfortable in the place of provision. My God, God has greater for you. So the previous Pharaoh was okay. But the Bible says there arose a Pharaoh who did not know Joseph. He did not know about their history and how they got into Egypt. He did not know about what Joseph did when they had the famine. And I believe he didn't want to know. So all of a sudden, their favor came to a stop. Who did that? God did that. Their favor came to a stop. And pastor, when I finish, wrote this message. Maybe it's for you. And I prayed after I finished. The Lord gave me a one line sentence and I wrote it at the end because I wasn't sure if it was for you, but I think it is. And it says, when man's favor stops, God's favor continues. Come on, praise God. When man's favor stops, God's favor continues. And so the children of Israel, all of a sudden, their favor stopped. This is a new Pharaoh. And it was during this time of hardship, they began to cry out to God. They began to seek God. And I realize that some people, when things are going good, they forget God. When things are going good, they don't praise God as they should. When things are going good, they don't pray as they should. But not until they've fallen into a trial and that bring us back to our knees. It should not be so. Our praise should be automatic. The Bible says, enter into his courts. Hallelujah. With praise and thanksgiving. It's only when we fall into a trial that brings us back to shouting and clapping and thanking God. It's only when we fall into trials that brings us back to the word. Because their favor has stopped. The children of Israel remembered where their help came from. God heard, God saw, and God responded. He raised up Moses to deliver his people. And Moses had such an encounter with God, he felt strong and he felt confident. You, you remember the burning bush? Yes, he had that encounter. You remember the conversation with God when he said, you know what, I'm unable to speak. And God says, who made man's mouth? He had that encounter. You remember the demonstration with the rod when he threw it and it became a snake. And he picked it up by the tail and it became a rod again. He had that encounter. Do you remember when he put his arm in his cloak and he took it out and it became leprous? He put it back again, took it out again and it became clean. Moses had all these encounters and conversations 
connection with God. Now he's going to Pharaoh with boldness. My God. Now he's going to Pharaoh with boldness. You know who I am? I threw my rod down. It became a snake. I put my arm and it became leprous and get clean. Now I'm coming to you with boldness. Confident. Let my people go. Oh, for many of us, it may seem when you start to press into the Lord through your prayer and fasting, when you begin to draw near to God and he's beginning to draw near to you, when you've abandoned the sinful things of the flesh, it seems that now you take Christ seriously. Now you're going to pray. Now you're going to go to church. Now you're diligent in the word. You're walking the walk. You're talking the talk. You're dressing the way. You've obeyed God. You've got confidence. God's given you a word. My God, you went to prayer meeting. You got stirred up. You start rebuking demons and casting out devils, declaring and decreeing. And life took a turn for the worse. That was Moses. Puffed, ready, I'm going to Pharaoh. But the Lord and Pharaoh said no. And your life took a turn for the worse. But when Moses went to Pharaoh, the Lord says, now you will see. Now you will see what I'm going to do. Now you will see. You will see it now that you cannot fight this battle on your own. You will see it now that you cannot fight this battle. You cannot win on your own. I let you face what you're facing right now. For you to know it's not by your might. It's not by your power. But it's by my spirit. It's going to take divine intervention. It's going to take my spirit. You cannot fight this by yourself. My God is insurmountable. The problem that you're going through is very difficult and you cannot do it by yourself. Oh, hallelujah. You will see now that you need heaven on your side. Oh God, help us Jesus. The task before you is overwhelming, extremely difficult to deal with. You cannot do it in your own strength. You cannot solve it with your own intellect. If you're going to be victorious, if it's going to work out saints, if you're going to meet, oh God, if you're going in a meeting tomorrow and the answer will be yes, if you're going to get out of the hospital healed, if you're going to leave that courtroom with good, um, good, good response, if you are going to be victorious, it's only the presence of God, the glory of God, the grace of God, the power of God. Hallelujah. And the Bible said, God responded. Now you will see. Hallelujah. God has heard your prayer. And not because it doesn't look like what you prayed for God has responded and I'm speaking prophetically here today God has responded not because the situation haven't changed yet he has responded but your heart has weakened in this situation but I'm here to tell you God has responded He's spoken words of deliverance, words of life, words of good end, words of hope. And so I'm here to remind you what Jeremiah 33, 3 says. He says, call unto me, that's what God says, and I will answer. It doesn't make no sense we pray and don't believe that God's going to answer. He said, call unto me 
and I will answer and I will show you great and mighty things that you do not know. Hallelujah. Right now, I believe the Holy Spirit is reminding some of you in here of God's responses to the prayer that you've prayed, to the night that you have cried. He confirmed it with someone. He prompts you in the spirit and God has responded. So I'm here to say stop speaking hell over your circumstance. Go through it with the power and grace of God. The Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it will eat of the fruit thereof. Speak life today. Yes, Pharaoh said no, but speak life today. Hey, your situation doesn't line up with what God said, but speak life today because God has a plan. Oh God, help me Holy Spirit. He has a plan. And he started to say to Moses, now you will see. Hey, if you're in your trials today, I want to tell you now you will see. Hallelujah. God is good. His response is def definitive. There's no question about his reply. Man cannot change God's response. Devils cannot stop it. The seasons cannot delay it. Who can thwart the plan or the purpose of God? When he raised his hands, who can stop it? When he acts, who can reverse it or revoke it? Who can hinder it? Saints, this is how I talk to myself. I said, God, what have you spoken over me? Who can change it? Who can stop it? Who can hinder it? No season, no sickness, no man, no devil can stop the work of God in my life. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. If God says yes, who can say no? Your no means nothing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you shall see. You shall see it now. God is working out something good in you God is bringing you to a place where no flesh gets the glory oh, <laughs> oh I said yes Lord thank you he said to Moses you went to Pharaoh and Pharaoh slammed the door in your face now you will see <laughs> oh God I get you to the place where I want you to be now you will see mighty God no flesh gets the glory. No flesh gets the praise. No flesh can boast. Mm, when God work. He said, I want to bring you to a place where you will see. You remember Mary? When the angel Gabriel came to her and announced that she would conceive and bear a son through virgin birth. As, and as we're approaching the time, I know you're thinking about that. But I also want you to look at the process. Not that Jesus was born, but how? Mary asks, how can this be since I do not know a man? I've never been with a man. You see, because I know that you need a man to accomplish this. But how can this be? But God responded. You said Nadine, it was the angel, but he was sent by God. So he can only bring God's message and he can only give God's answer. And he said, no, no, Mary, not so. God has spoken something to someone that seems impossible. And I'm here to tell you it's not so. You don't need man. 
He said the Holy Spirit. Oh God. I just want to stop here and say be careful how we treat God's Holy Spirit. Because he's here with us, working with us. God says you don't need a man Mary man cannot do this the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you you see God has spoken something and it seems impossible but you don't need a man you don't need a woman no human effort can accomplish what God has spoken Hallelujah. God, whatever trials you're facing right now, he's bringing you back to the source. You've been depending on man too long. Hallelujah. God is bringing you back to where your help comes from. Oh, hallelujah. He's bringing you back to where your help comes from. It's not your job. It's not your experience. It's not your education. It's not your status. Moses, it's not the rod in your hand, nor is it Aaron, but it's my presence. Brothers and sisters, it's the presence of God. It's the presence of God. It's the presence of God. Oh, hallelujah. It's the presence of God. Ah, she my soul. Hallelujah. And Moses learned that. He learned that when you read Exodus 33. Moses says, God, if you don't go with us, if your presence don't go with us, and sometimes we don't value the presence of God in our lives. We do any and anything. We treat people any and any hour. We say any and anything. But I'm here to admonish you. Value God's presence upon your life. Oh, because without his presence, you can't accomplish nothing. Moses said, if you don't come with me, we're going to fail, God. We're going to fail. We're going to fail. We're going to fail. Help me, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. If you don't come, if you don't speak, if you don't show up, we're going to fail. I'm not going without you, God. I don't care who won't go, but I'm not going. Some of us, we don't want to come to church because this sister or brother is not here. Really? But the presence of God is here. Ah, stop depending on man. That's why I can't work out. That's why you cannot get the victory because you're depending on man. Mm. We can't accomplish nothing without the presence of God. And I can stand here today and tell you I don't want his presence to leave me. Oh, so I protect his presence. I protect the anointing that is upon my life. Hallelujah, because I can't do it. I face trials every day. I face discouragement every day. And especially when I'm about to preach. But if the presence of God is with me. If he is comforting me. If he is speaking a word. If he is strengthening me. I can walk boldly. Hallelujah. Oh hallelujah. 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 We need your power, God. We need you, Lord. We need your anointing. 
Yes, Lord, I see it now. That's why I'm going through this problem. I see it now, God. Yes, Lord, I hear you now. I see it now. I say, yes, Lord. I let go of man. I let go of the woman. It's not the job. It's not the boy. It's not the girl. But it's you, God. I see it now. Pharaoh said no, but I see it now. I see it, God, that you're going to make a way when there seemed to be no way. That you're spoken and no man can reverse it. Yes, God, I see it now. The Lord says, now you shall see. Now you will see. How man can help you. Aaron can help you. Ah, when Pharaoh says no, nobody can help you. Mighty God, now you will see. Hallelujah. God wanted Moses to see that the task that was before him was bigger than what his flesh could handle. God says, now. I love it when God speaks. I don't know about you. Every word has a meaning. God says, now you shall see. Oh, I pray tonight when you lay in bed and you start thinking about all that you're going through, you hear, now you will see. Now you will see. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You will see what I'm going to do to Pharaoh. Hallelujah. Your flesh has to die. Because no flesh can get the glory. No man can get the glory. God wants you back in his presence. God said to Moses, my name Jehovah I was not known to them. They didn't know me as Jehovah. Hallelujah. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob didn't know him as Jehovah. They didn't have that personal relationship. And I want to say that our four parents haven't seen the things that we are seeing today. Some of the things that's happening on the world today, they haven't seen them. But God wants to reveal himself in this generation, in your life, and about what's going on around us. What is going on in your life is not to destroy you. It's to bring a revelation of God. It is for us to see God as we've never seen him before. And I pause here to testify. I might have said it a few times, but the Lord brought it back. So I said, let me write it, God. And I remember I was unemployed for almost six years. I was pregnant when I got made redundant. And then I didn't have a job. And at one point, a colleague who I used to work with, she said, why don't you sign up for a college and get, get a student loan and pretend that you're going to school? And I didn't do it. I said, the Lord will take care of me. I come to tell someone today, don't take counsel from the ungodly. Don't follow the counsel of the ungodly. They will divert you from the will of God. <laughs> ah, the Bible says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Can I testify that during this six, almost six years of my life, I've never been in this situation. I've never been so broken. Joblessness. But the Lord has been my provider. Oh God. During the six years I preached here. You wouldn't know 
know that I was going through that. The Lord has been my provider. The Lord has been my comfort. The Lord has been my refuge. The Lord has been my strength. He took care of me, my family, my relatives. He took care of my bills, my ministry. He paid it all. Oh, can I testify today? It was while I was a working, my brother, I was made debt free. Amen. Debt free. Hallelujah. He healed my mind. He gave me manna every day. I've never seen this side of God. <laughs> oh, I had a great revelation of who my heavenly father is. The word became real to me. And that's what God wants. He wants his word to become real to someone. Hallelujah. Because when I read about the children of Israel wandering for 40 years, the Bible says their clothes didn't wear on their back. Their shoes didn't wear on their feet. My clothes didn't wear on my back. My shoes didn't wear on my feet. I look brand new every day because the glory of God. I never knew this side of God. Nobody can tell me that Abba isn't my father. Hallelujah. I now know him as Jehovah Rohi, my shepherd. I shall not want. Oh, when you say that, you have to say it with conviction. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And I can tell you, he didn't withhold any good thing from me. During those years, I've got so much testimony. One day I was at home and a pastor called me. I've never preached at his church. He's seen me. He's, he does a visit my church. And he called me because they were going on a mission, a mission trip. And I gave him my number because I was interested. And he called me and he said, Nadine... You're on my mind. And I said, okay, pastor, pray for me. And he said, send me your bank account. And I broke down in tears because this man don't know me. And I hesitated. I didn't send it. And he texted me and he said, send it now. God will put you on the mind of someone. You don't have to trick. You don't have to scheme. You don't have to lie. Just depend on God. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah! When man favor stops, God favor continues. Oh, glory be to God. That's a revelation. When God, when man favor stops, God's favor continues. So during those times, my flesh had to die. I had to humble myself and wait upon my God. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And while I was waiting, I wasn't relaxing. I wasn't being lazy. I was still working for my God. Still seeing my brethren going on holiday year. Oh God, you don't know. <laughs> Pastor, seeing them going on holiday year after year after year. But I kept working for my God because he has a plan and a purpose. On my life hallelujah I've never gone to bed hungry nor have my children we've never owed our rent we've never owed the bills my God if I tell you about Jehovah Jireh hallelujah 
Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. And so during my wilderness, and I'm coming down soon, I thought I was going backwards. I had a good job, getting good money. But no, I was going forward. What you are facing now isn't a sign that you're going backward. Don't let the devil tell you you're going backward. It's a sign that you are going forward. Moses wasn't going backward. Israel wasn't going backward. Your circumstances doesn't mean there is something wrong with you. Nothing is wrong with you. Nothing is wrong with your relationship with God. Oh, hallelujah. Nothing is wrong with your faith. I'm answering some questions today. Nothing is wrong. Oh, hallelujah. You're on the right track. Boy, if you tell somebody who's going through a slam door <laughs> and say you're on the right track, you've got to understand what it means. Moses was on the right track when Pharaoh said no, he was on the right track. Just keep on walking. Keep on walking. Keep on walking. I remember Jairus. God, I have to give it to you. He went to Jesus for healing. You remember Jairus for his daughter? And the Bible said that he went to Jesus. And I'm just paraphrasing. And he spoke to Jesus. And Jesus was on his way back to Jairus' house, right? He was on his way back. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, a woman came and she delayed the process. Oh, yeah. Holy Spirit, help me give the revelation. Instantly, that woman had her miracle. But Jairus is standing there. Come on, no Jesus, you yeah, take too long. Jesus was talking. He was having a conversation with the woman. When the message came to Jairus, he said, don't trouble the teacher any longer. Your daughter dead. How do you think he felt? He was on his way. Now the message comes. She dead. But God responded. Jesus turned to Jairus and says, do not be afraid, only believe. I'm not adding to God's word, but now you will see. <laughs> now you will see. And the Bible said, let me tell you something. What God starts, he will finish. He was on his way to Jairus' house. Whether she dead or not, he will finish it. What he starts in your life, God will finish it. No matter how bad it gets. That's why I'm so encouraged, my brother. No matter how bad it gets, if he starts, you know he's going to finish. Oh, hallelujah. Don't be afraid, Jesus said. Continue walking. Your daughter is dead, but continue walking. Oh, you have no money in the bank, but continue walking. Oh, they shut the door in your face, but continue walking. The consequence sent me a lift, but continue walking. Continue walking. Continue walking. Keep on praying. Keep on singing. Keep on clapping. Keep on pressing. Keep on believing. Because now you're going to see. Hallelujah. I'm going to close soon. Hallelujah. Keep on 
walk in. Hallelujah. Mighty God. Jesus said, now you're going to see. <laughs> now you're going to see. There's a glory that you need to see. And so, the Bible said that even, I just wanted to point out to you that even though Pharaoh said no, and things got worse, God said to Moses, go back. God said to Moses, go back. I'm telling someone today, go back. Moses went back. And he goes back. And he goes, it's not one time Moses went to Pharaoh. And he goes back. And he goes back. And he goes back. And he goes back. And he goes back until he saw the blood of the lamb upon the houses of his people. I'm telling someone here today to pray again. Go back again. Believe again. Sing again. Read the scriptures again. Believe God again. Don't take no for an answer. Go again until something happens. Until something descend. Speak to that mountain again. Don't give up. Speak to the mountain again. God is in control. Speak to the mountain. Pray again for your family. Believe again for your family. Pray over this ministry. Believe again for this ministry. Over your finances. Over your job. Until you see the blood of Jesus. Until you see the blood. Read the story. It was when that blood was shed. That's right. That's when they were victorious. Pray again until you see the blood of Jesus over your life. There is power in the blood. Oh, hallelujah. There is power, oh God. There is power in the blood. The blood of Jesus, stand with me, will make the difference and it will make a way for you. The blood of Jesus will cause the dead angel to pass over you the blood of Jesus will protect you the blood of Jesus will cause Pharaoh to say yes mm. your time has come restoration is here the Spirit of God is here. Praise God. Sometimes fear will tighten up his grip. Say, I'm not letting these people go. I'm not, I'm not releasing them. But when God is ready, he's going to show himself strong. Hallelujah. He's going to show himself mighty. He's going to show himself superior to every fear in our lives. Every iron grip. Every prison bar, hallelujah, they're going to move today, hallelujah. And God is going to release his people, hallelujah. And set us free, amen, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God said, let my people go, Pharaoh, let my people go. And he was stubborn, but when the time came, he had to call for Moses. And he told the people, get out of there. Get out from in front of me, be gone, I don't want to see you anymore. Because time for deliverance has come. Somebody give God praise in the house for deliverance, man. Time for change. The strongholds can't last forever. The prison can't last forever. The slavery can't last forever. The Lord is releasing his people. Amen. Amen. God showed himself strong for, for children of Israel and for Moses. And he's going to show himself strong for us. 
he's going to show himself superior to every force of darkness. And the victory is assured in the name of Jesus. Somebody bless God in the house for the change. The transformation. Turning of the tide. In our favor. Hallelujah. God is at work and nobody can hinder him. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Just hold hands with somebody today. We're going to just pray our final prayer. God, we thank you for ministering today. Lord, we have heard your voice. And God, you're bringing a release. You're bringing a change. You're bringing a transformation, God. Lord, we've been held in this bondage for too long. We've been held in this kind of slavery for too long. Oh, God, your people cried out after 430 years. And you say, surely, hallelujah, seen the affliction of my people. Hallelujah, I've seen their tears. And I know their sorrows. Hallelujah. And I'm coming down. Hallelujah. To deliver them. Hallelujah. Today's deliverance day. Today's breakthrough day. Hallelujah. Today's release day. Today is our open doors day. Hallelujah. And God is saying I'm going to do it. I did it for my people in Israel. I did it for my people in Egypt. Hallelujah. And I'm going to do it for you today. You're coming out. Amen. It may be long. It may be hard. It may be tough. But you're coming out today. Hallelujah. See yourself set free in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. For his word cannot return to him void. God is not a man that he should lie. Hallelujah. Has he not said it and shall he not make it good? Hallelujah. The Lord has spoken. And we say beat unto us. According to your word. Thank you Lord. Your promises are yes. And they are amen. Unto those that believe. We believe God. And we receive it by faith. And we claim the victory. Over every bondage. Every hindrance. Every stronghold. Every obstacle. They are moving out of our way today. And deliverance is here. And we give you the glory. Show up and show off, God. Let God be arisen and the enemies be scattered. And we're going to praise you for the victory, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. And we say amen and amen. Somebody just give God a worship in the house. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for joining us and thank you for listening to this timely and powerful message. You have heard the word. And now we would like to extend this opportunity to you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you wish to do this, please just say this short prayer after me. The Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I am a sinner and I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Please forgive me of all of my sins and cleanse me from all my unrighteousness. Save me and fill me with your Holy Spirit. I thank you for answering my prayer and I thank you for saving me. Amen. And if you have said that prayer, Congratulations and welcome into the family of Christ. If you would like to contact us or even visit us, the information that you need will be on your screen in a few seconds. Until next time, goodbye. God richly bless you.